Every school day, nearly 500,000 school buses transport more than 25 million students to and from school and school events. School buses are the safest vehicle on the road. Actually, they're one of the safest modes of transportation. We understand parents may be confused by the transportation options, especially with some school buses equipped with seatbelts and others not. Parents may wonder if children are safer if they travel to and from school in the parent's personal vehicle with seatbelts. But at the NTSB, we know that children are safest traveling to and from school in the school bus and that the school bus is designed to protect children, even in a crash. School buses are designed with a passive form of occupant protection called compartmentalization. When I say passive, that means that the child doesn't have to do anything other than sit in the seat to gain the protection. They don't have to buckle a seat belt and they don't have to make any adjustments. A simple way to think about compartmentalization is that it's like an egg carton cushioning and protecting the eggs inside of it. The NTSB has found that compartmentalization works well protecting children in frontal and rear impact crashes, but it is incomplete in side impact crashes and rollovers. This is because the seat back does not prevent motion from side to side or up down. Children are much safer in a school bus than any other mode of travel to and from school even safer than riding in a car with their parents. The NTSB has investigated school bus crashes where children were injured or even killed. These severe crashes, while rare, typically involve a side impact with another large vehicle or a high-speed rollover. For almost 20 years, I have investigated school bus crashes. From these crashes, we have learned that a seat belt may have reduced injuries or even saved a life. Three recent crashes in Chesterfield, New Jersey, Port St. Lucie, Florida, and Anaheim, California have provided the NTSB with valuable information about school buses, compartmentalization, and seat belts. The school buses in the Chesterfield and Port St. Lucie crashes had lap belts for students, while the Anaheim school bus was equipped with lap shoulder belts. For each investigation, we use computer simulations to better understand how children were injured in crashes and how seat belts may have helped. In the Chesterfield crash, the one student who died was likely not wearing the available lap belt at the time of the severe side impact crash. Without belts, compartmentalization is incomplete and students can travel from one side of the bus to the other, impacting hard spots within the bus and causing injury. From the simulations, we learned that lap belts can keep the occupant within the compartment during these severe side impact crashes. Because of the onboard video cameras on the Port St. Lucie school bus, for the first time, we were able to see what happens to lap belted children in a severe side impact crash. Although lap belts help, one child died in the crash. We simulated lap and shoulder belts to see if we could keep more of the child's body within the safety of the school bus's seating compartment. The results showed us that properly worn lap and shoulder belts provide the best protection for these severe side impact crashes. In Anaheim, California, we conducted our first investigation of a school bus equipped with lap shoulder belts for all students. Similar to the Port St. Lucie crash, the Anaheim bus was equipped with an onboard video recording system that allowed us to see what was happening inside the bus during the crash sequence. In the Anaheim crash, the school bus departed the roadway and impacted a pole and multiple trees. One large tree intruded into a region where two girls were seated. Fortunately, the girls were wearing the available lap shoulder belts. The simulations provided a comparison between the occupants wearing the lap shoulder belts and what might have happened had the occupants been wearing lap only belts or if the occupants had been unbelted. The results of the simulation showed us that the occupants were better protected with the lap shoulder belts. If we go back to the egg crate analogy symbolizing a school bus, without seat belts, 
School buses are safe and provide children with the best protection under most circumstances. Like the egg crate, school buses protect the properly seated occupants within their energy absorbing, closely spaced, high backed seats. But when we add lap shoulder belts to school buses, it's almost like closing the lid on the egg crate. We are providing children with an additional level of safety to help keep them in place but we're also placing some responsibility for that extra protection on the children. Children need to be taught how to use seat belts on the school bus properly. Parents, bus drivers, and school administrators need to reinforce the importance of proper belt use and ensure that the students and drivers are properly trained. Children need to be taught to use them on every ride. My son rides the school bus every day because I know he's safe. All children are safest when they travel to and from school on the school bus, not in our cars. Children, especially teens, are safest when they travel on a school bus. As we look toward the future of school bus safety, the NTSB believes and has recommended that when states and school districts look to purchase belt equipped school buses, that they look towards lap shoulder belts, which provide the highest level of protection for our children.